There's no denying that these cloud and SaaS companies have been on an absolute tear over the last few weeks because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The stay-at-home environment is here to stay. We've seen companies like Fastly, like Datadog, last night Zscaler, which is up 20% today. Are there any left that haven't already ran? I've got one that I'm going to show you called PagerDuty, which actually reports next week. Should you be buying this before earnings? Stay tuned to find out. All right, so what stock am I talking about? It is PagerDuty. That stock ticker is PD. And PagerDuty is actually a really interesting company. It's a brainchild of founder and chief technology officer, Alex Solomon. He used to work at Amazon. And when he was an engineer at Amazon, he realized that bugs arose in Amazon's code, but employees would be paged at all hours of the night to fix the problem. So literally on call, oftentimes only one or two people really need to be alerted, but he would only realize that hours after trying to fix the problem. And so he took that knowledge. He started PagerDuty. He started a company with the goal of accumulating all the signals that servers send figuring out a way to identify exactly where the problems were and notifying only the people that needed to be notified to fix the specific problem, making things much more efficient and uh, increasing the happiness of employees' lives. Since then, the company's offerings have grown and now sells five different services, and it's proving popular with customers willing to fork over $100,000 or more a year. So these are quite large deals. Pretty interesting company. Let's dig into it a little bit more. Okay, first stop is going to be just their website really fast. You can see right on the first page here, Eric Wan from Zoom with a quote, Vodafone. There's some really cool companies that actually use PagerDuty. You see Netflix, BBC, American Express, Peloton, DoorDash. Pa PagerDuty is the central nervous system for your digital ecosystem. What do they do? So they have on-call management. They have incident response. They have an event intelligence, analytics, and visibility. So we talked about those five different products. There's the five buckets for you. They have 350 plus integrations, so you're up and running immediately. This is a stay-at-home play, and I have a strong feeling that they're going to outperform you know, with earnings next week. Now, it's not a guarantee. There's been a few of these cloud players that have you know, swing and missed, um, but for the most part, most of them have done very well, and when you see the information I'm about pr to present to you, you're going to realize, or you're going to probably agree with me, that there's a high chance that these guys outperform on their earnings. So let's dig into a little bit further and take a look. All right, so this is the investor session from September of 2019. So it happened you know, several months ago, but the information is still very good and it gives you a good idea of what the company is all about. Digital transformation, you keep seeing this. If you've been watching my videos, digital transformation, it's what all CIOs talk about, what most business executives and enterprise companies talk about. Digital transformation requires major change. Every company is becoming a software company. It's imperative for companies to meet customer expectations. The DevOps has become mainstream and strategic. Cloud migration is really powerful and hard, difficult. And developer and technology headcount is rapidly growing. So this next slide here is really valuable, I think. So it's complex infrastructure, legacy processes. When we say legacy, we're talking again about on-prem, old school, you know, not on the cloud, not SaaS. It's saying that those legacy processes, those old school processes increase a company's risk. So your customer's up on top there. And you can see in the bottom, 53% of customers leave after just three seconds of latency. And I'm one of those. I have a one gig service. If I click on a website and it doesn't work in two seconds, I lose patience. And <laughs> not saying it's a good trade. It's just you're, you're, you know, you're spoiled nowadays used to having that speed instantly. Up to $500,000 loss of revenue for every minute of downtime. Think about that. A half a million dollars, $500,000 lost every minute of downtime for these major corporations. And of course, bad experiences go viral and it just makes the situation even worse. So what every company needs, okay? Delivering real-time experiences, visibility across the different stacks and orchestration of people, teams, um, using the intelligence, the automation and learning. So you need a combination of those and digital transformation is a team sport. Our mission to connect teams to real-time opportunity and elevate work to the outcomes that matter. This is a cool slide here. She and PagerDuty is the brain in the middle. You've got the machine data on the left. You've got the human response data on the right. Visibility, orchestration, machine learning, automation, analytics, empowering teams to make the right action in real time. And this is an awesome slide here. Really well done. 
platform is uniquely positioned as a central nervous system. Again, you got the brain in the middle for digital ecosystem. So if you look at this, I mean, you can see real-time platform from action. They've got responses, experience, emails, KPIs, calls, action data events, all of this different stuff. And on the top left, you've got your apps and services. You're going to see a lot of companies in here that you've heard me talk about that I own stocks for like Datadog, Zendesk, Salesforce, New Relic. In fact, I have shares of all those companies. Next, you got your cloud and containers. So now you got Microsoft Azure, you got AWS for Amazon Web Services, you got Google, um, on and on and on. You know, Internet of Things is the next thing. Um, scripting tools down on the bottom, Puppet, you, you might not know what those are. Top right, you got Oracle Database, MongoDB. I own uh, stock in Mo MongoDB. You've got your Odka here at Networking and Security. You've got your Splunk. You've got your Juniper. You've got your Cisco. And then social media, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, maybe Snap, whatever. And then workflow tools, you've got your, uh, your ServiceNow, which one of my top holdings. You've got Slack. You've got Team. You've got GitHub. So they have 350-plus integrations, and it helps these companies take all of this information and put it together as kind of the central nervous system for the digital ecosystem. Real-time operations, dynamic, fluid, and high stakes. This is another great slide. And you can see on the left, you're harnessing your digital data from social, from containers, from database, from cloud. You're making sense of the data. There's incidents and opportunities in the middle. And then you've got response from your dev teams, your security, your support on the right. And so it's harnessing the data, making sense of the data, respond and engage to your teams and analyze and learn from the data. Orchestrating real-time solutions with the ecosystem. So you have, this is actually awesome too. I, I keep saying that, but so you have the on, the on the far left, high volume leads to latency at checkout. Now the alert, alert is triggered for, you know, Dynatrace is, is a company that helps tr trigger these alerts. You got Datadog, you got Zendesk, which is up 22% today after earnings. You've got Amazon, and then it's taking it over to real time. And then PagerDuty will basically orchestrate that information for teams to resolve the problems immediately. And then the, the last one is PagerDuty logs tickets to resolve the issues, not requiring immediate attention. So now you've got your, your service now. Here's their value proposition. So enabling the future state of digital operations. So you want to increase revenue and improve customer experience on the far left. You're going to focus on resources and innovation instead of fighting fires all the time. Boost people, productivity, and engagement. We mentioned in the very beginning how you know, only contacting the people that need the information is going to make the company more effective. It's going to make the employees happier. It's going to automate responses and workflows. You're going to improve cost efficiency and you're going to migrate, or I'm sorry, you're going to mitigate business disruption, which we talked about earlier can be very expensive to, you know, not only revenue, but also reputation. Only PagerDuty addresses the digital operations management opportunity. Another awesome slide. And you can see on the, on the right here, um, where my mouse is kind of flying around, $100 billion plus in overall opportunity. And in that, you have $75 billion in the benchmarking, the real-time visibility. This is the real-time operations platform. And then the smaller cloud here is incident management, which is about $25 billion opportunity. Other solutions do not have the capabilities for real-time operations. So homegrown solutions, which you used to see a lot in the past where companies would actually you know, build their own systems. Now there's software for almost anything and it doesn't make sense to spend all the money to try to build and manage and sustain that. Uh, alerting and notification tools in the middle. So, you know, and then on the right side, you got the traditional ticketing solutions. Other solutions lack business-wide correlation and orchestration. So on that left side, you've got New Relic, uh, you've got Splunk, you've got, so APMs is New Relic and Dynatrace, on-call management, you've got like Victor Ops, log management is Splunk, you've got team and the IT centric, you've got ticketing queries in the bottom. What they're saying here is PagerDuty can do all of these things. It's uh, predictive and proactive, business-wide orchestration, embeds best practices, things like that. So this is their go-to-market, how they're going to acquire and grow their base, their client base. So they, they do something called land and expand. And what that means is basically they're going to give free trials and then they're going to try to expand that in product self-service and sales assisted. So giving free trials and then, you know, hey, this is a great product. Now this is a compelling account, you know, engagement. Let's, let's maybe, you know, buy the licenses for the company. That's kind of the idea behind that. So more users, more teams, upgrade plans and products, land and expand. 
ensuring customers succeed. So they have the PagerDuty community. They got thought leadership, ex expert services. They've got a university, which is just training people how to use PagerDuty and then support. Efficient go-to-market drives growth. So you've got the very top, you got, you know, a billion dollar, a high value field sales. You can see that they have 274 customers as of you know, the end of 2000 or September of 2019, they have 274 customers spending more than a hundred thousand dollars annually. You got mid market here and you got the small and medium. So that's kind of the pyramid expanding pager duty across the enterprise. You can see uh, the viral team to team growth technology initiatives. So you can see that quite a, quite a big jump up from 820 to 21,740 users. So they're growing their their footprint. Customers, we kind of talked about a little bit on this other one, but you can see Slack, AWS, Zendesk, Team, uh, Odka, ServiceNow, Microsoft, New Relic. I mean, there's there's some big companies that use um, PagerDuty. It's applicable to any vertical. So, you, you know, when you think of verticals like tech, you've got healthcare, you've got travel and hospitality, social media, etc. So, uh, SMB, so small business, all the way to enterprise. They've got 12,000 customers, 89 countries, and more than a third of the Fortune 500, which means they've got two thirds room to grow. This is the evolution of PagerDuty, which I, <laughs> I always find this interesting. So, you can see back in 2012, they had 25,000 users on that far left, and now in you know going into 2020, they had about 350,000 users. So, um, it's growing. It's growing rapidly for sure. Here's their digital operations maturity model. So going from reactive and maturing into a preventative uh, company. PagerDuty's real-time operations platform, we've kind of covered earlier, but it does everything from DevOps all the way over to the business ops with analytics, visibility, intelligence, on-call management. It's a whole stack basically to help with those, those items. This is pretty cool. We're going to show you kind of some examples of what it would look like on your, your phone if you actually had pager duty and you're running at your business, say you're an executive and you're checking in. On-call management made simple and, and at scale. This enables teams to reduce the time to acknowledge and go on call with best practices and forces accountability and quality with intuitive scheduling and escalations to ensure the exact right people are notified every single time. Here's their real-time operations platform. So it's providing the teams with the ability to reduce time to resolve major issues, automates the process, identifies it, it manages the issues and orchestrates the response across any size organization, whether it's small or large. Real-time operations platform, you can actually see, um, you know, here's kind of statistics, last six months, last seven days. Very user-friendly, very intuitive. Here's their operations platform, which looks pretty slick. The, the events by service, I kind of like how this has these different bubble graphs in here. This is, this is really good you know, for executives to get real-time data and just have a quick snapshot into their business and visibility. So digital transformation is what it's all about. Real-time operations platform, you can see again just an example. So here's like a quarterly, quarterly business ops report that you know, an executive would look at and it shows you all these different stats. Investments across the PagerDuty platform. So they're investing in machine learning. So for visibility, for automation, and continuous learning, so a scalable, available performance security, we've said that a few different times. Here's our 2020 innovation plan. So you've got analytics. Um, they're doing review scorecards. They're adding to that. Then they're doing some ecosystem improvements with ServiceNow and Slack that they're doing about right now, it looks like, um, Q2 2020. And then modern incident response in Q3. And then Q4, look at all the stuff that they have on the end of, of Q4, so or end of 2020 Q4. Event intelligence, service directory improvements, analytics improvements, customer service use cases, developer, developer ecosystem, which developers love. Financial discussion. So here are some of the key financial highlights. Obviously, again, they're reporting on June 6th, so they're reporting next week. And, you know, I've been buying the stock before earnings. Maybe that's the right call. Maybe it's not. I think there's a high chance that it is the right call. $143 million in, in revenue, 48% revenue growth, decent growth. Now, you can see all this. I'm not going to read everything. It's sticky. It's got 132% uh, retention rate. So if you remember the last video that I did on how to evaluate a growth stock, we talked about the GRIT score. And a little homework for you. Anybody that's watched this far, 
you know, is probably a true fan of the channel and really wants to learn. So I appreciate you very much, first of all. Secondly, let's do a little bit of homework. And in the comments on YouTube, I want you to reply with a comment. And I want you to calculate the grit score, what you think the grit score is for pager duty, and tell us below. And I'm going to wait till, you know, maybe a week until I get some responses. And then let's have a discussion. Because I guarantee you that there's going to be 20 different people that have 20 different numbers. So go ahead and do that. It'd be kind of a fun exercise and a great way for you to learn. So multiple engines for sustainable growth. You've got, you know, the mid, mid market enterprise international, you get new products, new use cases. There's, there's lots of opportunity for these guys to grow. The recurring subs subscription revenue is 99% plus. You can see from uh, FY 2018 to 2019 went from 80 to 118 and then Q2 19 to Q2 20. 28 to 40. So, um, you know, solid numbers. You can, this is what you see on a lot of these SaaS companies. You've got Q1 2018 to Q2 2020. And you can see, you know, the, the, the subscription revenue is constantly going up. Here's just another chart kind of showing you, uh, you know, proving that they can continually land new customers and continue to grow um, 15% there. So enterprise and mid-market expansion, you know, you want to see these charts going up. Once you see it start to contract, that's when you see issues so far. So good. Hopefully that continues here next week. Uh, expansion with their customer base is massive. Look at how they've grown their customer base, um, within the customer base. So they're expanding their footprint with new products and new services and more revenue leading quarterly gross mar margins. So, Gross margins are pretty consistent. You're looking 85%. Those are solid, of course, for, for a SaaS type company. The dollar base retention rates, you know, pretty stable in that 135% range. Continued investment for future growth. So here, here's where they're actually showing how much money the expenditure as a percentage of revenue. This is important when you're doing calculations. And you can take a look at this and see the different numbers. So you've got your general administrative is the dark green. The bottom, that lighter green, is going to be your, your research and development. And the middle is going to be your sales and marketing. Long-term target model, you can see, again, pretty consistent with the gross margin, 85%. The sales, the sales and marketing, you can see the target model is 35%, and they're running in the 50s. So they're trying to bring that down. Research and development, they're trying to bring down over time. You know, so what this is telling you when you see these SaaS companies it's literally showing you how they're trying to grow into profitability. So when you talk about the rule of 40, it's not just, you know, not just revenue growth year over year. You can also beat the rule of 40 through profitability. So they're showing you on here their target is when they start to mature, they can spend less on R&D. They can spend less on sales and marketing. They can, you know, continue to have gross margins. And that's extra profit that's going to go to your, your profit margin. Unique differentiators drive. This is really cool. So 10 years of data. So they have multiple moats. They're saying 10 years of data built for real time, 350 plus integrations. They have breadth of functionality, secure, they're resilient, they're scalable. On the right, you got growth engines. So you got your enterprise. We talked about earlier, international, new use cases, more users, upselling, new products and expanding footprint equals long-term success. For all my accounting fans, here's uh, you know just a quick snapshot of the uh, financials you can take a look at that and feel free i'll, I'll put the pdf link below in the comments uh, or in the description of the video and you can go check out this slide deck yourself okay so there's a good background of what the company does you probably have a good feel of what they're all about and some of the potentials so what do i think about the stock so i've been buying it but i am cautiously optimistic it's one of those things where everything seems to make sense it almost seems too easy it seems like the chances of this blowing the doors off for the, you know, for earnings are very high. And a lot of times when it seems like a no brainer, it ends up being a bad call. So I have been buying this. I didn't go all in. I have about a 50% position. So if it drops on earnings next week, I'm going to probably double down. I'll probably take a quarter chunk and try to double down my position to get a full position and kind of back myself in. If it runs, great. I have a 50% position, a smaller position, and it runs. And I have a lot of positions in my portfolio that are that way because I, I don't just go chasing it every time. I leave room. I leave cash in case I need to buy it. And if it runs, it runs. So that's what happened with several stocks in the last few weeks that have run and I didn't get a full position, but that's okay. So my, my suggestion, my opinion 
would be if you like the company, you like what you see, do some more homework on your own, make a decision. If you want to maybe buy this stock, page your duty, stock ticker PD, I would recommend not going all in, saving some room in case earnings are bad. I think there's a really good chance, though, that they're going to have strong earnings because of this work from home situation. And that that's why I've been adding it. I'm actually up significantly already because I bought it towards the lows. So I feel pretty good about my position. Would I go jump into pager duty, you know, right now in a full position? I would not at this price, but I certainly would probably buy a 50% position and save some room in case it does fall after earnings. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your time and attention. Please check out the Facebook group, type in Fired Up Wealth on the search, join us there. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.